Good morning. My name is Francesca Scalisi. I'm head of the research department of Nemetra Sediment, Euro Mediterranean Documentation and Research Center. And I present a research entitled Phase Change Materials for Building Envelope Applications. In 2018, the building industry has absorbed 36% of global energy consumption and produced 39% of annual greenhouse gas emissions. These data surely are very alarming, but are nothing compared to the 2050 outlook, when the energy demand will increase by about 50% and the demand for building cooling will triple compared to 2010 values. In the building industry, the building envelope can be a crucial building subsystem to reduce energy consumption and CO2 emissions in the atmosphere, contributing with adequate technical and technological solutions and highly energy efficient materials to a prospective energy saving that the European Union estimates at 32.5% by 2030. The gradual awareness on the environmental emergency and on the repercussions in human, social and economic terms, reverberating on buildings through macrophenomena stressing the whole building system, the growing cost of energy and the demand for a higher quality thermogrammetric well-being made by the users have pushed the researchers and designers towards new envelope concepts in general and facades in particular. The resilient attitude of biological systems to respond in an adaptive, reactive and dynamic way to hostile and adverse external stresses aiming to minimize the system's vulnerability rather than safeguard the full integrity of the systems at all costs. That is, to ensure that it can preserve its vital functions with minimal losses. It starts to interest the building community, since it is so effective and efficient that it aims to be a new paradigm from which draw inspiration to design the functioning of artificial systems. The adaptive envelope category defined as closing systems made up of multifunctional, preferably passive, and highly adaptive systems capable of changing their functions, characteristics, properties, performances, configurations, or behaviors in a fixed period of time, responding to variable boundary conditions and with the aim of improving the overall performance of the building. Therefore, the research is oriented towards biomimetic applications emulating through materials designed at a micro and nano scale the behavior of living organism originating a functional morphological variability of the objects concerned and often also to their appearance. Consequently, the Dynamism is no more linked to the action of a mechanic actuator hidden from view, but, for example, to photochromic coatings that regulate glass transparency or to brise moved by phase change actuators or even to external coating membranes that change their geometry and volumes according to the incident solar radiation on surfaces. Among the different materials developed with the research at micro and nano scale, the phase change materials can be a possible solution to reduce the energy demand in the building sector by reducing heating and cooling demand of buildings. The thermal energy storage systems allow to store a certain amount of energy in the accumulation stage to be used at a later time. And among the different methods methods used for the heat energy storage. The latent heat thermal energy storage uses the characteristics of phase change materials. 
These are materials capable of changing their status from solid to liquid and vice versa, depending on the amount of heat they absorb, which becomes latent heat during warm weather and release the heat during cold weather. These materials are in a solid state at room temperature, but when temperature rises, they become a liquid and accumulate energy in a latent form. The cycle is inverted when the temperature decreases. Again, they return to their initial temperature. In this case, the PCMs return to a solid state and in this phase change, they release the previously stored energy as heat in the environment. Their thermal storage ability is higher than the one of a traditional material having a certain mass. Thermoregulating materials represent an innovative technological solution in building design, as they give the possibility to reduce the daily fluctuations of the room temperatures through the reduction of indoor temperature peaks, and therefore of the energy consumption necessary for air conditioning the rooms. Furthermore, as a non legible advantage, it must be noted that they are functional and operational without any type of external power source and give dynamism and adaptation flexibility to external weather conditions. One of the first PCMs used in passive solar systems is water. Many studies have been and still are carried out on the use of PCMs in buildings to store heat energy, demonstrating the considerable interest for these materials all over the world. However, to use the PCMs, we should verify a series of thermophysical, kinetic and chemical requirements. Those that have the greatest impact on their effectiveness, among others, are High latent heat of fusion, high specific heat, high thermal conductivity of solid and liquid phases, little or no subcooling during freezing, non-toxic, low price and effective availability. The various types of PCMs known to us do not have all the characteristics listed in Table 3. The PCMs are categorized in organic, inorganic, and eutectic. Paraffin and non-paraffin are organic PCMs. Salt, hydrates, and metallics are inorganic PCMs. Eutectic PCMs are divided into organic, organic, inorganic, inorganic, and inorganic, organic, as in Table 4. The PCMs, whether organic, inorganic, or eutectic, have some lacks of performances as stated in tables 5 and 6. As it can be deduced from tables 5 and 6, the organic PCMs are available in a wide range of temperatures, are chemically stable, non-corrosive, non-toxic, do not undergo supercooling or segregation, and have a high latent heat of fusion. At the same time, they have a low thermal conductivity that could be improved by using a thin encapsulation. Inorganic materials have a good thermal conductivity and a high latent heat of fusion and are not expensive and non-flammable. But, for example, salt hydrates have some limitations, such as supercooling, segregation and corrosion. On the other hand, metal PCMs do not have a suitable temperature range to be used in the building sector. Among the most significant criteria for the selection of PCMs, there is the melting temperature whose value has to be compared with the climate zone where the materials will be used in the buildings. Several studies agree that high melting temperatures of PCMs seem more effective for warmer climates, while low melting temperatures can be more efficient for colder climates. Specifically, 
For the Mediterranean clim climate, the best melting temperature range in winter goes from 18 degrees to 22 degrees, while in summer it goes from 25 degrees to 30 degrees. Paraffin is the most used PCM for indoor cooling, even if, in some cases, salty rates and fatty acids were used. In the future, it would be advantageous to use within the same materials and or components PCMs with different melting temperature to improve the energy performance both in warm and cold seasons. Given the above mentioned limits, many studies to ameliorate the mechanism of latent heat energy storage of PCMs have been carried out. They focus on the integration methods of PCMs in building materials such as plaster, plasterboard, cement, insulation and glass, and the use of nanotechnologies. PCM incorporation methods are mainly divided into two categories, direct and indirect methods. The direct methods of incorporation, both the wet mixing and immersion, were mainly used in the past and have been abandoned due to the possible loss of PCMs and the direct interaction between PCMs and building materials which can cause the deterioration of the mechanical and physical characteristics of the materials. To avoid loss and incompatibility problems caused by the direct contact between building materials and PCMs, most of the studies carried out in recent years have focused on indirect methods that involve PCMs encapsulation. The encapsulation methods are mainly of three types, based on the size of the capsules, macro-encapsulation, micro-encapsulation and nano-encapsulation. These sizes influence the stability of the PCM since the smaller the capsule is, the more durable the product is. The macro-encapsulation method consists of integrating the PCM in containers such as tubes, bags, spares, porous materials or panels, which are generally bigger than one centimeter. Some of the containers developed as PCM's capsules are steel spares or porous structures of lightweight aggregates. LWA to them is usually applied as a highly conductive protective coating material to avoid leaks and at the same time increase the speed of heat transfer. Microencapsulated PCM refers to PCM particles enclosed in a thin solid shell as microcapsule which is usually made of natural and synthetic polymers ranging from 1 micrometers to 1000 micrometers, which prevents the leakage of the phase change material during the solid to liquid phase. Besides preventing PCM's leakages during phase change, microencapsulation provides a quick heat transfer through its great surface area per unit of volume, improving chemical stability and thermic reliability since the phase separation within the material during the phase transition is limited to microscopic distances. Microencapsulated PCM can also be integrated in concrete. Most of the studies that have integrated microencapsulated PCM in concrete have used the replacement method, that is, replaced a specific quantity of fine aggregates with PCMs in the concrete mixtures. Since they have a lower loss in resistance compared to mixtures with PCM, is in which PCM is used as an addictive. 
Integrate PCM in concrete, especially organic paraffin, can increase its heat storage ability, although PCMs can have some negative impacts on physical and mechanical properties of concrete, which depends from the PCM integration method used during the creation of the composite PCM concrete. Researchers currently tend to reduce the size of encapsulation to the nanoscale to maximize the effects of its size and the surface area involved in the heat transfer. Nanotechnology is the understanding and control of matter at dimensions between approximately 1 and 100 nanometers. A nanometer is equal to 1 billionth of a meter where unique phenomena enable novel applications. On this level, fundamental properties such as pores, surface mass relation, conductivity and elasticity can be improved to create materials that can provide a better performance than present materials. In the architectural field, the advent of nanostructured materials concern the entire building from the basic structure to the wall coatings, from light, lighting to energy production. And most important of all, it is considered crucial for energy efficiency in buildings. The nano enhancement of PCMs can be achieved with their encapsulation inside a nano shell or a nano fiber. There are several experimentations that have used PCM nanocapsules to improve the thermal properties of cellulose nanofibers or PCM nanoencapsulated in a silica shell, highlighting how the use of nanomaterials can help overcome some limits of PCMs, such as low thermal conductivity. Other researchers concerned the improvement of paraffin thermal conductivity through the dispersion of titanium dioxide nanoparticles, but also the development of new phase change materials enhanced with carbon nanotubes and with a polymer organic hybrid shell which reduce internal temperature variations and absorb more heat. In conclusion, taking into account the experimentation and the aforementioned research, PCMs can take the role of new thermoregulatory paradigm for architecture. To do so, it will be necessary to invest more in research. Conversely, regarding the technological issues, some research areas can concern the creation and development of new PCMs for specific geographic and climatic contexts and building elements and components in which integrates them. It would be important to focus on materials having PCMs with different melting temperatures to improve the performance of buildings both in warm and cold seasons. Regarding the environmental issue, it should not be overlooked that these innovative storage materials and systems should be analyzed, especially by taking into account their whole life cycle. Currently, there are only few LCA studies and research available, limited to paraffin, which has a significant global warming potential and total use of non-renewable primary energy resources impacts and to salted rates that have a minor impact. Thank you for your attention.